the word of the day is AI. AI, ROI. Why are you so excited about this? Like what gets you off the edge of your seat? Not that long ago, it was primarily voice. How do you yeah. manage and route? Like really it's, it's in recent years here where boom, omnichannel has come about. And then all of a sudden it's like, well, now the prospects of AI and self-service and deflection and containment, like become real things. What gets you kind of excited about it? And where do you see the promise of that? Oh my goodness. I'm super excited about AI and thinking about number one, there's so much to unpack here with, with the question you asked and, and the lead up to the question in terms of contact centers today, I'm still shocked how many of them are voice only. I know. In 2023, it's true. So anybody out there, if you're voice only, let's let's talk. Yeah, uh, right. Frank, Frank and I can help you uh, to uh, to expand the, the channel choices there. But ultimately, AI provides so much power, and it isn't just virtual assistants. Virtual assistants is huge, and and that has been the theme of 2023 for almost everybody I've been talking to. It's, it's, we, the contact centers continue to struggle with labor shortages, struggle with attracting and retaining talent. And I don't think that that's going to go away anytime soon. No. So as contact centers are looking at how do we attract and retain talent or better yet, the better question is how do we handle all of the contact volume that we receive into our contact center? There's a couple different levers they can pull. The first is increasing salary for the agents. That's not sustainable. In fact, uh, the Human Resources Society um, stated this year that on average, the average salary increase is 4.6% this year and continues to climb with inflation. Mm -hmm. So if you take a look at that salary increase over the course of five years and compound it and project that out, if you're a, a contact center with 100 agents, in five years, you're paying a million dollars more for that labor than you did today. Wow. Just from the compounding of increases in, in wages. That's not sustainable either. Yeah. So yeah. You and that's say, right to the bottom line, right? I mean, when, when we say it's a million dollars more, it's like, well, that's a million dollars out of gross margin. That's a million dollars out of net income. So if you're a, a CEO, a, a CFO, a COO, you're, you're starting to get a little bit nervous about this contact center. Exactly, exactly. And contact center leaders are, are given, uh, more often than not this year, they're given targets, savings targets to hit. And, and it's how do you, how do you hit those saving tar savings targets in a sustainable way mm -hmm. that's not going to negatively impact your customer experience? Right. And your agent experience as well. And AI is certainly one of those, those areas to take a look at. So what I love is, is just the all of the advancements in IBAs over the course of the last year. Um, yeah. It has certainly accelerated. I think we saw that with Ch chat GPT added gasoline to the fire back last November. And uh, we've taken off on a rocket ship that's not coming back anytime soon. It's massive. I feel like it's the advent of fire. Correct. Correct. And it can be voice bots. It could be chat bots. I'm, I'm talking bots in general. And that's really where I'm seeing a, a ton of, of value and, and really going to help with, with the agent shortage. So anything that we can identify out of the gate that could be a natural self-service component within your bots is going to help you tremendously lower your agent requirements. And, and, solve for the agent shortage that you potentially may be facing within your contact center. And so as you take a look at your choices here, do you wait for that, for that uh, increase in agent labor year over year, or do you go ahead and invest now? And it's not, it's not a huge investment. And you continue to, to answer proactively the, how do we, how do we, drive costs out of the contact center? How do we improve the customer's experience? Customers want to self-serve, whether it's online through your FAQs, whether it's through bots, it needs to be a great bot experience. And I think that that's what, we, what we've seen historically is horrible bot experiences. I think we could spend the rest of the hour, Frank, talking about horrible bot experiences. And yes, I mean, I've, right. I, I have been guilty of, of creating horrible IVR experiences <laughs> as well. That's a different show altogether. We won't go there, but, um, you know. It sounds like a 12-step program, like, hi, I'm Joanna, I creep. 
bad bot experiences. Um, and everybody says, hi, you know, cause they're all there, <laughs> they've done it. Um, but I, I think that like, ultimately there is, there is, a, um, an aspect that like it is here, it is working. It does have risk. You can mitigate the risk. And what's really fascinating about it. And I've seen the numbers, like we've worked on the numbers together, Joanna, and yeah. we have seen the ridiculous spike in ROI. When you look across the contact center and you looking at all the different components, you say, well, here's a ROI for this, here's a ROI for this, and then here's a ROI for AI. That number cannot be real, but it is real. And when it's compounded with everything else, that becomes pretty tasty and pretty important for the sustainability of that business. Absolutely. Absolutely. So a point of clarification, that 12 step program, I don't create bad bot experiences. No, you don't. I know. <laughs> I created those bad IVR experiences in the past. Yeah. Um, but but certainly, and, and as you think about this, it's not just containment, right? As you think about just the natural language, how may I help you today question that a bot can ask? Think about how many people press zero, just get out of frustration in a right. DTMF IVR, right? I mean, we're all guilty of it. Mm -hmm. And so that increases your transfer rate, decreases the opportunity for, for containment. And so just a simple question like that, I was working with a customer recently who had over a 25% transfer rate because of their DTMF IVR. So utilizing a natural language virtual assistant to just ask that question Mm -hmm. We can easily decrease that transfer rate in half. I, I project even more than that. But again, taking that conservative approach, let's let's go with a half in yep. the ROI and, and then whatever else we save on top of that is, is an added bonus. So really like what you're saying is that it really comes down to these user stories, right? Where yeah. we tease out and we drive containment into that area, which creates capacity inside of the business. That's how you activate it. You find a user story, you find a point of friction and you work on that right. over 500,000 calls. Like what, what does that start to do inside the business? Exactly. Exactly. And, and don't just, when you think of user stories, don't just think of customer user stories as well. What we're starting to see now is really the shift focusing not just on agent experience, but also supervisor experience. So when you think AI for supervisors as well, and some of the great things that are coming out with quality management, auto scoring, sentiment analysis, um, alerting a, uh, supervisors when there are challenging phone calls automatically and proactively so that they can yeah. jump in and help the agent. That's huge. Like, giving your supervisors time in their day and not having to, to manage all of the minutia and manual processes is huge as well. So think about it across your organization where there's friction points, not just for your customers, but your agents and your supervisors well, as well, and what that would mean from, from an ROI perspective. Yeah, I love that. That's really kind of just eliminating so many blind spots, right? Yes, and yes. That's, that's, that's where it's not so much... You know, what you know, it's what you don't know that's going on inside of the contact center that usually sneaks up and, and you can't be reactive to it. You have to be proactive and, and in the flow.